from Chinese health officials. As we bring these numbers, please note China has once again changed how they count new cases. About an hour or so ago, officials said there were only 349 new infections reported in the last day. 108 people died, bringing the total above the 2100 mark. Let's bring in Meg Terrell, who can help us decipher these numbers and the new counting methods. Meg. Well, that's right. Well, if these numbers are from Hubei province, the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak in China. And to put them into context, we've been seeing new cases of closer to at least 1,600 per day in the last week. What appears to have happened is that Chinese health officials now are only counting cases as confirmed when patients have a positive lab test. Now, joining us live now is former FDA Commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb to help us understand the new numbers. Dr. Gottlieb, and we're going to bring in um, Dr. Lena Wen from uh, Baltimore in just a moment. But Dr. Gottlieb, let's start with you to help us understand this new methodology. It was just last week we saw another change where we saw 14,000 new cases in one day. So can we really read anything into these numbers we're getting from Hubei province at this point? Well, they've gone back and forth now. It's not unusual to see the diagnostic criteria change in an epidemic like this. As you learn more about a virus, you change the criteria that you use for calling someone positive. Um, initially, they were relying just on positive uh, PCR tests, these diagnostic tests. Then they included people who had a clinical diagnosis, people who had symptoms that were very consistent with the disease and findings on chest x-rays or CT scans that suggested that they had coronavirus. Now they've gone back to just relying on a positive PCR test. I think the risk in this is that if China tries to uh, you know, convince the world that this epidemic has passed when, in fact, it hasn't inside China, and they take the foot off their brake too early and they start exporting cases again. Right now, no cases or very few cases are probably being exported from China because most countries have put in place travel restrictions. But they'll start to lift those travel restrictions if China is able to convince the world that the epidemic has passed. Do you think that this change in methodology, uh, yet again, is an attempt to make the numbers more confusing and to make it appear as if case counts are declining, even if they perhaps are not? Well, we know China hasn't been uh, transparent with the world through this entire episode. Uh, early on, they withheld key information that would have helped nations prepare for this. Um, I think there's also a concern that in other provinces inside China, they're only testing people who have a connection to the Hubei province. And since, since they've shut off travel from the Hubei province into other parts of China, um, they're not testing a lot of people who are presenting with symptoms of coronavirus in other parts of the country. So they could potentially be missing an epidemic in other parts of the country. We really don't know um, what criteria they're using outside the Hubei province as well. And that could be a, that could be a concern. Well, we want to also bring in Dr. Lena Wen, former health commissioner for the city of Baltimore, uh, and also talk about what's going on in the United States. Dr. Wen, thanks for being here tonight as well. You know, we only have 15 cases confirmed in the U.S. right now, most of which are travel-related cases, aside from the folks who are evacuated and are in quarantine. Um, how would you assess the preparedness of the U.S. and whether you think it's possible we have cases circulating here that we just haven't diagnosed yet? Well, I think it's, first of all, important for people to know that the risk to the everyday American in the U.S. is extremely low from coronavirus, that you're much more likely to get the seasonal flu and you should get your flu vaccine and hand wash and all these other all these other measures. But the U.S. response so far has been very strong. The it's been led by public health officials following evidence based science. And um, there is a lot to be commended about how the U.S. has very quickly contained and mitigated the coronavirus. There needs to be more that's done. We have to strengthen local public health infrastructure because healthcare workers and local public health, those are the folks are, who are on the front lines. And the strength of our response really depends on those frontline workers. Do Dr. Gottlieb, how important was it that China did shut down Hubei province and shut down Wuhan. And if we did see a mini outbreak here in the U.S., which of course we hope that uh, does not happen, would the U.S. need to take similar draconian action? Would they even be able to do so? Well, I don't know that we'd be able to do what they've done. And it's unclear whether or not the kinds of draconian action they, they've taken has been fully effective or whether they've exacerbated spread within the Hubei province. Look, shutting down the Hubei province and the travel restrictions we put in place in this country probably stopped more cases from being exported into the country. But we need to worry about whether or not cases got into the country before we put in place those travel restrictions sometime between mid-December and mid-January, when we know this was epidemic inside China. And we need to be leaning forward and doing more testing here in the United States, screening 
people who have atypical cases of pneumonia and that isn't explained by flu or other causes of pneumonia that could potentially be coronavirus. Now, we don't think this is spreading widely in the United States, but it could be spreading in low numbers and we're just not detecting it. So we need to be leaning forward and doing much more surveillance than we are right now. Dr. Wen, there's lots of reports that a vaccine might well be a long way off, but, but what about antibiotics that could treat those infected as opposed to, to just preventing the disease outright? Well, I think there are studies ongoing about what could be effective, not antibiotics per se, but maybe there are some antiviral medications that could treat coronavirus, and all of that is ongoing. But I do agree with Dr. Gottlieb that there's just so much that we don't yet know about coronavirus, including how infectious it is, how widespread it is, and also how much undercounting might be occurring. I'm really worried about China, that there may be a lot of people who are not being counted, who have mild cases, who may have no symptoms and may be spreading the, the, the disease. And I'm also very worried about what happens when those cases occur in other countries that don't have as developed healthcare systems as the U.S. does. Well, Dr. Wen, I, I want to ask you, uh, just very briefly, you know, you, you ran, you were the health commissioner for a very large uh, U.S. city. Um, do U.S. cities have enough funding? We saw 25 Democratic senators ask the Trump administration to focus on more emergency funding for this response. Do you think at the local level there's enough funding to make sure the response can be as strong as it needs to be if we do see those cases? No. Local public health officials know exactly what to do. This is what we prepare for every single day. But we don't have the infrastructure in place to sustain the work that's already being done to treat existing illnesses and to prepare for existing emergencies. That when something like this comes up that takes many more resources, we need a lot more funding. And that requires infrastructure building every day and not just when an emergency hits.